Lisa Funderburg, welcome to the Drexel interview. Thank you so much. Well, your first book, Black, White, Others, a collection of interviews with 46 adult children in which one parent is black identifying and one white identifying. And that's an important distinction because many people in this country are mixed race, but they don't necessarily identify with one or the other. So could you clarify that issue of black identifying, white identifying, as you understand it? Sure. The, uh, the reason that I narrowed the focus of the book the way that I did was because I was trying to essentially complicate our discussion of race in the country because I think one of the issues has always been that people oversimplify or they use terms that are meant to be an umbrella term for something that it really, it's, it, life is more complicated. Identity is overdetermined by all of the various forces that influence, influence us. And so as the child of a white mother and a black father, I knew that my experience had many similarities with other people with the same background as you would see it on paper, but, but was also different for reasons because of how I turned out, you know, the amount of melanin in my skin, the texture of my hair, where I grew up, what religion the family practiced or didn't practice. And so I made this distinction about white identifying and black identifying because race doesn't exist. And so it's such a social construct. Evidence of that is that the uh, Bureau of the Census has changed its definition of what race means over the years. They themselves say it is a social construct. And so I was allowing for people's own sense of self to determine the label that I would then work with. And I wanted to see what it was like for all of us who had this seemingly common background of, of parents from two different groups, how we negotiated identity and race. So let me ask you, yourself, how do you identify? My sense of identity has changed over time. But I have come to a place, and a lot of it was informed by all the research for this book, by hearing these, by collecting these oral histories from so many people, that I am comfortable in having a fluid identity, which means that I am all the things, I am all the things that I come from. Like Walt Whitman said, I am large, I contain multitudes. But in some contexts, I feel more black, and in some contexts, I feel more white. And how I feel, I recognize, can be very different from how other people see me and treat me. Do you think you represent a, a vanguard or, or a trend or a new kind of being that has come into being uh, with this postmodern world that we live in now? Uh, I think that there is a shift towards, just as there's a sense of being living in a global village where our boundaries are not, our, our geopolitical boundaries are not as fixed and firm as they used to be, so too is identity evolving. Um, it does not mean, as many people like to think, that all prejudice will go away as people turn more brown because I'm afraid that a sort of inherent tribalism of us versus them, of who am I safe to be around, who's like me, who's unlike me, is likely to persist anyway. But I think it's very helpful to um, have a bunch of people around who are from more than one background because I think it forces most of us who experience this to um, approach life with a perspective of of the possibility of commonality with people who don't appear to be like us. And, and that, in my value system, is a good thing. 